Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome to the Central Durham Crematorium Joint Committee held on Wednesday, the 27th of January 2021. Can I thank everybody who's in attendance today and those who are watching us online? Little reminder to those who are uh, attending today to uh, toggle yourself on a mute when you're not uh, 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 speaking. And if you could introduce yourself the first time that you, you speak uh, to give the, the public a chance to know what's going on. Can I go on to apologies for absence? Yes, Chair, we have apologies from Councillor Corrigan of Durham County Council and Councillors McAlone and Sprout from Spennymoor Town Council. And the substitute members? We have Councillor Machen in attendance as a substitute member for Councillor McAloon and Councillor Reynard in attendance as a substitute member for Councillor Sprout. Uh, can I thank those members uh, for their attendance and appreciate their time. Can I go on to the minutes of the meeting held on the 1st of October? Can Councillor Jan Blakey move them as a true record? Thank you, Jan. Anybody like a second? OK, more than happy to second them myself. Uh, I'll second them, Neil. Appreciate that. Thank you very much, Shelley. Appreciate that. Uh, we'll move on to item four, which is declarations of interest. Are there any declarations? OK, thank you very much for that. We'll move on to item five on the agenda, which is the performance and operational report. Graham, I believe you're going to lead us through this one. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Graham Harrison, Bereavement Services Manager and Registrar. Um, the reports for the period the 1st of September to the 31st of December 2020. And the number of cremations um, that were carried out can be seen in Appendix 2. But in summary, 201 cremations from Durham. 29 came from Spennymoor and 505 from other areas. There were three non-viable cremations undertaken for the period covered by the report compared to five in the period last year. And there were 62 less cremations undertaken in the period September to December 2020 compared to the same period last year. And members may recall that in April 2019, two new charges for cheaper cremations, i.e. direct cremations of attended and unattended were introduced. And between the 1st of April 2020 and the 31st of December 2020, there was actually no direct cremations attended by family members. However, there was 28 direct cremations unattended with no service. Next time is the sale of memorial plaques for the same period, September, December 2020. There were 72 sold, which equates to £22,924, compared to £55,16,885 in the same period which was an increase of 17 memorials and an increase of £6,039 of revenue. The next times with regard to operational matters and staffing, uh, members were informed at the last meeting about the ongoing COVID-19 situation, that staff are facing um, were still providing a high level of service to the bereaved and the loved ones. And the staff continue to cope with the demands and would still like to thank them again for their assistance during this difficult time. Um, the crematorium continues to be served by staff with many years of experience. This is a case of Bur Durham and Mountset. Um, the roads within the crematorium have some specialist features that require both specific training and experience. And one staff member has recently submitted an expression of interest in early retirement, stroke voluntary redundancy, um, and to ensure that we have a contingency and resilience for the future, we're proposing to consider the options to present to members of the next meeting. Next time with the Green Flag Award. Um, we were successful in September 20 in retaining that award um, for the ninth year running. And we're due to fill in the management plan, which should be submitted by the end of this month. Um, and any required works will be covered by the existing budget. The next time is the recycling of medals. Um, collections in the 2020 have resulted in another two rounds. Um, we've previously nominated St Cuthbert's Hospice. However, due to COVID-19 restrictions, a cheque for £10,000 was handed over to them on the 3rd December 2020. And a thank you letter um, is attached to Appendix 3, Chair. The second round of nominations have now been made available, and we've nominated antenatal research and choices based at Dryburn Hospital. Next time is the Clean SLA. 
The clean of the crematorium um, is provided by facilities management on a service level agreement. The two year SLA, which cost £9,100 per year, expired on the 31st of March 2020. However, due to COVID, a revised SLA was not reported to the Joint Committee due to the Council meetings in 2020. High quality services can be continued and we have a new SLA for the period April 2020 to March 2022, costing £9,652, which includes all labour and material and that can be seen in Appendix 4 chair. The next item is a new item. It's the Federation of Burial and Cremation Authorities Inspection. Um, this is a new form of inspection carried out by the Federation in August 2020. Um, the purpose of the scheme to provide the operators of the crematorium with confidence that it meets the national standards. Um, there's no additional cost for the inspections as included in our annual sub subscription fee. The inspection took place on the 28th of October 2020 on six key areas of service provision. And the inspector found that we comply with three key areas of compliance. We found an excellent level of service provision and did not feel it necessary to make any recommendations with the crematorium achieving a score of 321 out of 325 with 99%. A copy of the report can be found in Appendix 5. And the last item, Chair, with regards to Christmas tree, Unfortunately, we were unable to provide one for St Cuthbert's Hospice um, due to COVID and they've requested if they could have one in 2021. And no other requests have been received from the organisation. And we'd just like to note the recommendations, Chair, note the performance of the crematorium, note the condition with regard to staffing, note the continued success with the green flag, note the updated position with regards to recycling the metals, consider and approve the SLA with the cleaning, Note the compliance scheme report from the FBCA and agree to St Cuthbert's Hospice providing the Christmas tree again in 2021. Thank you, Chair. Graham, thank you very much for that comprehensive report. And do, on behalf of the committee, pass on our best wishes to all the staff for the hard work that, that they've done. Um, I've opened the floor for any questions. If there are any questions that any members would like to, to ask, if you'd like to RTS. Uh, if not, uh, Graham's gone through the list of recommendations. Can I particularly draw attention to 3A and the service level agreement? Uh, in the absence of any objections, I'm happy to uh, go forward with that. Say no objections. OK, happy to approve all the recommendations. Thank you, Graham. Thank you. Can we move on to the next item? Yeah. On the Chair, oh, sorry to interrupt, but there is somebody in the chat room wanting to speak. Uh, sorry, uh, can I uh, bring in Councillor Dean Ranyard? Thank you, Dean. Thank, thank you, Councillor Foster. Yeah, I was just wondering if, if there was any further update on the um, proposed widening of the entrance to the crematorium. I know that was mentioned at the last meeting and that had been put off due to obviously COVID restrictions, etc. So just wondering if that's that's back on the table now. Is that work going to be carried out in the near future to get that entrance widened? Thank you. Yeah, I can come in there, Chair. Um, I've currently got the design team revising the drawings and the gateway. So it's hopefully going to start from April. Thank you, Graham. Can I bring in Councillor? Oh, sorry, Dean, were you happy with that answer? Yeah, that's great. Thanks for the update. Thank you. Thank you. Can I bring in Councillor Jan Blakey? Yeah, thanks. Um, it's on the. Um, we know what's happened up there, Graham, over the last fortnight. Um, with more, no doubt, will follow. Um, when when we're getting in the deep clean, going through the service level contract, there's no prices. It's price on application. How many have we had them in to do a deep clean? Yes. Since the breakout. Yeah. Yeah, we have. Yeah. And the other thing was, was there any movement on the generators? It's it's been put, as we say, it's been uh, held back a bit because we've had more pressing things come up. Yeah. Um, um, but it is still part of my plans to look at. And with regard to the deep clean, we've had them in twice to deep clean. And I was also in on Sunday and deep cleaned it myself, the whole building. Right. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> OK, if everybody's happy. I'm going to move on to item six on the agenda, the financial monitoring report. Phil, I believe you're going to take us through this one. 
Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, Phil Caron, um, Finance Manager for Neighbourhoods and Climate Change. OK, so this first report just gives members um, details of the provisional outturn position for the current financial year based on work that was carried out up till December um, 2020. It also talks about the projected level of reserves that we expect to have at the end of this financial year. Um, I've just moved down to paragraph four. Members will see this. We're forecasting a surplus of 978,000 for the crematorium this year. That's against a budgeted surplus of 761,000. So 217,000 more than expected. Um, also, in terms of the expected level of reserves that we're going to have at the end of the year, which shows in paragraph seven, um, the total reserves and balances would be 2,064,000. So just moving on to the main body of the report, um, if you look at the table under paragraph 11, that lists all the individual um, sort of expenditure and income headings of the CREM. Um, shows the net um, surplus position of the 978,000 that I've talked about. Um, and also um, gives details of the distributed surplus to both Durham County Council and Spenny Moore Town Council. Um, moving on, the next section gives, um, I suppose, explanations of the variances between the expected outturn and the budget. Um, I would just draw members' attention to the um, paragraph 13.4 on income, which is the biggest biggest change, um, showing an increase in income of 323,000 compared to the budget. And that's basically because of the additional 525 cremations that have taken place during this financial year, which has accounted for um, the extra income and is the main reason for the fact that the surplus is um, 200,000 higher than what we originally thought. Um, section 14 just details the capital programme. Um, members will see that that's pretty much on track. The only thing that um, hasn't really occurred is the relining of the two cremators, and that work's now expected to occur in 21 22. Um, and paragraph 15 again just reiterates the, the reserve position showing that we're going to be two million and sixty four thousand pounds of reserves and balances at the year end. Don't know if there's any questions on that. OK, thank you Phil, for that report. Um, open it up to questions. Are there any members I uh, would like to RTS? Uh, if not, can I thank you Phil uh, for that report and I think we'll go on to the next report which is the provision support services. Phil, I think you're going to take a yeah. yeah, thanks, Chair. OK, so this is just um, a report to present for approval really regarding the proposed service level agreements um, carried out by Durham County Council for the crematorium committee. Um, paragraph three lists the services that are provided. Um, management services, financial services, admin, payroll, and HR services. Um, in terms of the um, what's recommended in paragraph eight, um, we're suggesting a one and a half percent increase on the recharges that were um, charged in 2021. That's just really a, um, reflects the pay and price inflation factors that are being built into the council's MTFP. So the charge for 21-22 would be 34,315. Um, there's a breakdown in Appendix 2 of that charge across the different um, services provided. Um, and really, members are just asked to approve that, please. Thank you. Again, I'll open it up to any questions from any members. In the absence of any questions, are we happy to go ahead with the recommendations? Okay. Agreed. 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 Appreciate that. Thanks again, Phil. That takes Agreed. Us on. Thank you. Thanks. That takes us on to the next report. 
Uh, the fee charges, I believe. Phil, again, yeah. take us through that one. Thanks, Chair. OK, um, item eight. This is the fees and charges that are proposed for 2021-22. So basically what we're saying here is that I suppose the main item which is um, flagged up in paragraph four is that we're looking to increase the cremation charges by £20 from £720 to £740. That's the same increase that was done last year as well. It was the same £20 increase. Um, in terms of um, fees and charges for 21-22, um, although, as I mentioned in the previous report, there were 525 um, cremations more than we were expecting last, well, in the current year, the budget um, that we're proposing to do is based on a similar level of cremations to what was budgeted for, so it's quite prudent we're not factoring in those those additional items um, so based on the fact that the charge will be increasing from 720 to 740 um, paragraph 10 there's a table in there and the highlighted um, figure of 44,000 um, which is the additional income that we would get on the 2200 budgeted cremations um, the rest of the table, just for information, shows the additional income that we would get if the cremations um, increased and also if we'd increase the fees. But we're proposing to stick with the £20 increase. Um, but members will see that um, if we do go for the £20 increase for every additional 50 um, cremations over and above the 2,200, we would get an additional £37,000. Um, so there are also some some other small changes to some of the other fees and charges. Um, those are all set out in Appendix 2 and also for members information, Appendix 3 contains some comparator information um, as to how um, this crematorium compares with other crematoriums in the region. So any questions on that, please? OK, Phil, I'll, I'll open it up to uh, to questions. Uh, obviously, I think it is important to, uh, when looking looking at that, to see how we uh, relate to the other crematoriums in the area. And I'm, I'm pleased to say that the situation is, as it always has been, we're on the most cost effective uh, crematoriums in the area. Uh, are there any questions any members want to raise? If not, are we happy to go with the report? Agreed. Great, thank you very much. Much appreciated. Thanks again. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, my apologies. Uh, can I bring in uh, Councillor Ian Machen? Just a so just a question because I couldn't find the numbers. Um, the number of, the number of cremations this year is in this year is expected to be two thousand seven hundred and twenty five. Pardon? Two thousand seven hundred and twenty five. So, so if we come in, if it's a similar level, and I'm thinking about the dreadful background we've got for COVID and everything else, if it's a, if it's a <clears throat> similar level, then the additional income income next year is going to be an, almost another 400,000 on top of the budget. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's I'm just thinking sort of, for, for, I know we try to be prudent. For several years, we've run with, um, a forecast or a budget which is significantly below, if you like, the trend line. I think that's historically based. Oh, sorry, Phil. Uh, no, no. My apologies. You're, no, no, you're the officer. Uh, my apologies. Um, I mean, obviously, these are these are very um, very difficult and sort of um, stretching times compared to um, normal years, but. Um, we didn't really want to, um, I suppose, set, set a, a budget that was much more out of the ordinary compared to previous years. I take on the point that if um, that level of cremations is constantly, um, you know, short of what we're achieving, then we should be looking to do a more realistic budget. Um, 
and we'll certainly review that going forward. And if um, if we see a need to do that, then we'll take action. The only thing I would add uh, is obviously this has been a, a rather strange year, uh, and it's not one that I would be basing the, the future on. Obviously, we all hope it's going to get better in the next 12 months. Um, so if there aren't any other questions, can I thank Phil for that report? And that leads us into the revenue and budget report, item nine. Okay. Phil, yeah, yep. Thanks, Chair. Um, all right, this is the um, this is the report setting out the 2021-22 revenue and capital budgets. Um, so members will see this um, if I move down to um, section well, paragraph five. There's the section on each of the um, areas of the budget. So the employees budget has just been increased by a small amount to take account of incremental progression and some relief attendant cover. Um, the premises budget is basically based on what the crematorium has in its um, asset management plan for the coming year. So all of that's reflected in there. Um, the support service costs um, have increased by £675, which is a reflection of the earlier report where we've increased the, um, the support service costs that, through the SLA that the County Council provides. Um, and the income budget, this relates to the previous report as well, obviously in terms of um, in paragraph 10, it shows that we factored in the extra 44,000, um, which is based on the 20 pounds increase for the cremations, along with some of um, other increased charges to do with memorials and things like that. Um, so overall, the income budget's been increased by 46,350. Par paragraph 12 sets out the capital budget. Um, so we've got a total capital budget for 21-22 of 251,000 and the details of that are set out in the table. Members will note that the relining of the two cremators is included in there, which was an underspend in the current year's capital budget. Um, paragraph 13 just sets out the, um, the surplus redistribution that will go to the County Council and also to Spennie Moor Town Council. That was agreed by members at the meeting in September. And the EMR reserves, there's a section on that. And basically the net effect of that is that the estimated total reserves at the end of March 2022 would be just short of two million pounds. Um, the detail of the budget is set out um, in the appendix. Um, and Members are just asked to approve it, please. Thank you, Phil. Thank you for that comprehensive report. Again, I'm going to open up to any questions from any of the members. I don't see any questions at the moment. Uh, so in the absence of thank you Phil, for your uh, hard work and diligence this morning, much appreciated. Thanks, uh, happy to go with recommendations in the report. OK, this takes us on to item 10 on the agenda, which is any other business. I have had notification from a councillor, Amanda Hopgood, of a question she would like to ask. Amanda? Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, councillor Amanda Hopgood, I represent Framagat Moor and Newton Hall Ward. I had an email over the weekend which surprised me. First of all, I want to say thank you to Graham, to the staff, because the last year I can't imagine how difficult it's been and keeping everything going. Um, within the crematorium. But I was quite surprised that we have no access to the physical book of remembrance. Now, next month on March, we're going to be coming up to the first anniversary of people who've, who've passed away from COVID and especially people who weren't able to have relatives at their funerals. So I suspect we're going to have a lot of people who want to physically see a book and see it written in. And I think that given the amount of months we've had, it's not unreasonable that we come up with some way of having either an appointment system where people can book to go and see the page on the day that it's opened 
and I understand how important this is for some families. Um, my mother-in-law lost a baby between both my husband and, sis and his sister. And when that child would have been 40 and it would have been 50, we went to look at the book. Now, every other year she's happy to do it online, but there are some times when people want to physically see it, want somewhere to go, want to put flowers down. And I think given the crematorium, we must have the facilities there to be able to open up the room on an appointment basis and in a way that it can be sanitised and cleaned between each visit. I'm looking at the budget. If we have to employ someone on a temporary contract, it's within our cost to do that. I just think we need to think about the personal loss that people have at the moment and what we can do to help alleviate that in some way. And if it's just being able to go and see the book in person, we need to be doing everything we can to try and facilitate that, please. Thank you, Councillor Upgood. Graham, could I ask you to do an initial reply? Yeah, um, basically it was closed just for members information due to government's guidelines that we did have to close the Book of Remembrance. Um, we have put on the website that the Book of Remembrance is closed and we do have an online version of the Book of Remembrance, but I can understand where Councillor Hopgood's come from. Um, the situation we have at the moment is we very short staffed at the moment and we're having to do deep cleans in between every other service which doesn't free up any of our staff members to be able to open the book of remembrance and actually go in and physically clean at the moment. But we can look at options for the future if members would like us to. Yeah, that's no problem. Chair, may I ask this committee to, to agree that we look at a temporary contract for as long as this goes, because it only has to be a temporary contract to bring someone in. We've, the, we've just heard how much extra the, it's made on unforeseen circumstances. Let's use it for people to get some comfort and, and it be invested so that the public can go and see this book. We've got the resources to do it and can we do it as soon as possible? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hopgood. Um, what I'm going to uh, endeavour to take along with my uh, the vice chair uh, if the three of us could get together, Graham, and we'll talk it through. And I'll, obviously, I'll endeavour to keep the members in the loop. But I appreciate the sentiments, and I can see a lot of nodding heads. Uh, so, if Graham, uh, we can get together along with uh, the vice chair and see if we can talk it through. Would that satisfy everybody? Uh, yes, chair, and I do agree with Amanda's sentiments on this. Yeah, I, I think we all genuinely do. Uh, yes. We all appreciate what what's been said. Um, I haven't had any other notifications of any other business. Uh, so I'm happy to close the meeting at this point. Can I obviously uh, look forward to seeing you hopefully um, in the flesh, as we say, uh, at the next meeting, uh, though fingers crossed. Uh, if not, can I thank you all for your attendance today? Yeah, can I thank you. Councillor Blake, he's indicated she wanted to speak. Sorry, Councillor Blake, my apologies. Yeah, it was on it was on Amanda's um, ah. proposal. Um, um, if we employ somebody, it'll help the crematorium staff out as well to help them deep clean a bit quicker and give them a bit more time between services. Thank you, Councillor mm -hmm. uh, Blakey. I'll I'll I say I'll trade that into the conversation that we're going to have. I'm sure on behalf of the committee, we'd like to thank the the staff and the officers mm -hmm. for their hard work in the course of the year and uh, what they've been doing recently. Can I thank you again for your attendance today and I uh, appreciate your time and I'll close the meeting if that's okay. Thank you. Neil. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Neil. I've just put